Did I seriously just do an entire video on why a hair light is important and then immediately forget to turn it on in the next video? Yeah, I did. What's up guys? My name is Caleb Bronco. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based here in South Florida. And today we are talking about the most underrated camera of 2020, the EOS R6. So I've had this camera for six months now, so I've really gotten to put it through its paces, and it is by no means a perfect camera, but I, I really do think this camera got majorly overlooked last year. This camera does almost everything that the Canon EOS R5 does and the Sony a7S III does, but for over $1,000 less. So why don't we just jump right into it with just how this thing feels. And it feels great. It has a nice big old grip there that does that does not feel uncomfortable to hold. They finally brought back the scroll wheel, which was majorly missing from the EOS R. This is my favorite thing with going from the DSLR to the mirrorless setup, is now we have three different dials that'll control aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. It just, it makes things so much faster to change settings on the fly. So good job, Canon. They have swapped out the uh, screen at the top with a little scroll wheel for your mode selector, which isn't really a big issue. I never really use the top screen anyways. Uh, and it, it, it makes it really quick to just kind of switch to whatever mode you need. Although there's one major problem that I've found with the, um, the modes of this camera. And that is that the three custom functions at the top uh, cannot be set for uh, video functions. They are photo only. They could fix that with firmware, I don't know, but as of right now, you can only use those for photo mode, so I just don't even use them. Other than that, build-wise, the only thing that really bugs me is the fact that they used a micro HDMI, which it, it still lets me do everything I need to, but it's just, it doesn't feel very secure. They really could have even gone with like a mini HDMI, Preferably a full size like the a7s3, but if they couldn't fit it, I understand But they should have absolutely been able to fit a mini HDMI because the EOS R had it And this isn't that much and that's this is actually is chunkier than the EOS R So they really should have been able to fit it. I don't know why I don't know why they opted for the micro HDMI one awesome feature is that we finally have dual card slots We have dual UHS 2 card slots here. It's definitely handy having two card slots in here. Although you can't record video to both card slots at the same time, which is kind of annoying when I'm shooting like professional projects. I really wish that I could write to two cards just to have that backup in case anything happens to the one. Um, but for photos, you can uh, write to both cards. So I do do that. Just helps out a little bit. As for the screen, we have a little uh, variable angle touch screen here. Um, and it's the same uh, screen size and viewfinder quality that you'll find in the EOS R, which I always thought was fine. Moving on to the photo capabilities of this camera, and there's some good ones. The photo capabilities is really where they did not skimp out. They didn't actually skimp out really on anything on this camera, um, just com I, compared to the R5. Uh, the, the photo capabilities are identical to the R5. They are absolutely the exact same, apart from the sensor that is in this camera. This thing shoots 12 frames a second with the mechanical shutter and 20 frames a second with the silent shutter. Actually, why don't we give it a listen? That's crazy. This camera features a 20.1 megapixel sensor, uh, which some people are saying uh, is not enough. Personally, it's, 20.1 megapixels is more than enough for anything that I'm ever going to be doing. Uh, I, mainly, I mainly post on like social media and for websites, even printing. Uh, honestly, have not had an, an issue at all. You can print these things out huge and they're still not going to be good. Just don't stand like an inch away from it, but then don't stand an inch away from like any print. Get your grubby hands off of it. Supposedly has the same sensor and processor as the 1DX Mark III and if it's good enough for a $6,500 flagship camera, uh, then it's probably good enough for a $2,500 um, mirrorless camera. Just, just saying. And this sensor was more than enough when I had to shoot for Bugatti a few months ago for their global launch of the uh, Chiron Persport. 
Uh, actually, I had to down res most of those photos so they could uh, put it on their website and um, in their print books to go out to clients. Um, so yeah, that was cool though. One thing that Canon finally added to their cameras is IBIS. And this thing has a killer IBIS system. It's like six or seven stops of um, image stabilization and then like up to eight with certain lenses that have IS. I think it's only the RF lenses. You can you can handhold this thing at like half a second and get a clear photo as, as long as you're not shaking all over the place. Like don't slam an espresso and then try and take a half second photo handheld. It's not gonna work. I, I don't think I have a single complaint with this camera as a stills camera. Everything on it works perfectly. Um, I'll get to the autofocus of it later. There's a whole section of it. There we go. Uh, but as a, as a stills camera, this honestly is like all I could need. Moving on to probably the reason that most of you are here, uh, video. What are the video capabilities of this camera? Well, uh, it'll, it shoots 4K up to 60 frames a second, shoots 1080p up to 120 frames a second, all with autofocus in every mode. And it does all of this in 10-bit 422. And it makes for such a cleaner image and you can mess around with it and push and pull it a lot, so so much more than um, their 8-bit their codecs. Oh, I have nightmares editing their 8-bit codecs. Something amazing about this camera is that all of the 4K modes are oversampled from 5.5K, which actually compared to the R5, <laughs> makes it almost better at 4K than the R5 minus the 4K 120 because all of these 4K files are oversampled from a 5.5K image, whereas the R5, unless you're shooting in the 4K HQ, which only goes up to 30 frames a second, um, you're, you're getting line skipped 4K, which is, it's fine, it looks good, but it's considerably softer than the 4K than the, the, the 4K straight out of this camera. For everyone saying that the R6 does not have a crop it actually does, but it took me over a month to realize it. It has a 1.07 times crop when you switch into 4K, and it's it's such a small crop in that I, I, I genuinely did not notice it for a month of shooting. I was just scrolling back and forth one day from 1080p to 4K, and I was like, did that image, did that image get tighter? But it is such a minor detail that you, I guarantee you, you will never notice. Something great too, it shoots Canon Log. Um, after the EOS R, uh, we kind of expected every camera to shoot Canon Log, uh, so that's not really a surprise, but definitely nice. I do wish they would put in um, Canon Log 2 or Canon Log 3, preferably Canon Log 2, um, so we could get more um, dynamic range out of this this camera, because as it, as it sits, this thing only has like 11 usable stops of dynamic range. Obviously we're not gonna get up to like the uh, C70 and reds that are that shoot 16 plus. One can dream, one day, one day we'll get more dynamic range out of these little tiny bodies. Also, unlike previous Canon cameras, you get full autofocus in every shooting mode. Uh, so 4K60, 1080, 120, uh, you have auto, you have full dual pixel AF, dual pixel AF2 actually, in every mode, uh, which, has been extremely helpful. One thing to consider though, if you plan on getting this, this camera, uh, is the 10-bit 422 footage that comes out of it is a nightmare to edit. My iMac right here um, has crashed more times than I want to count uh, trying to deal with this footage. Um, it, it, like sometimes it refuses to make proxies, which is super fun, I love that. Um, but my M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch handles it no problem. Something to consider with this camera is you don't get um, all eye compression. You only get IPB, which, come on Canon, you could have put all eye in that. You could put it in a firmware update. You should put it in a firmware update. That is one of my least favorite things about this camera. It's not the biggest problem in the world, but they really should put all eye in this camera. Um, IPB is just a more compressed codec. Um, and it's not as easy to edit, which is kind of frustrating. That's probably one of the reasons why uh, it's such a nightmare to edit. Being only a 20 megapixel sensor um, and having 4K that is oversampled from 5.5K, this thing is actually really good in low light. Uh, I've, had, I've had shoots where I've comfortably shot at like 4,000 ISO for video and haven't had a problem whatsoever, haven't had to add any uh, noise reduction. Whereas uh, <laughs> with my EOS R that I had before, um, I upgraded to the R6, I I was scared to shoot over 800 ISO. The shadows 
were just, it was just a noisy mess. Coming back to the IBIS in this camera, but now for video, um, I have mixed feelings. I have, I have very much mixed feelings. It works great sometimes and absolutely atrocious the other times. There's some times where I could be walking through a hallway and it, I don't even have to add warp stabilizer. It's just perfectly smooth. And then there's other times where I'm trying to get a, a smooth little, just a quick little handheld motion and it's wobbling all back and forth, all crazy like. Uh, it, like it, it looks like you put warp stabilizer on a clip that should not have warp stabilizer on it. But yeah, it's very hit or miss. Thankfully, you can turn it off in the camera so you don't have to deal with it. It just fixes the uh, sensor right there. But I do believe you then can't use your um, lens stabilization if you have a uh, IS lens, which is kind of frustrating. So you're either stuck with the IBIS, which can sometimes wobble like crazy, or you just have to use like nothing. So yeah, this camera pretty much ticks every box for me video wise for a hybrid camera, minus the dynamic range and the IPB compression and the IBIS wobble sometimes. Moving on to autofocus and it, Canon came back with a vengeance against Sony on this one. Not only do we have IAF in this, but we have animal IAF. And I don't know what kind of witchcraft is going on inside this body, uh, but they can find the eye on almost any animal that I pointed at. It's scary good. It's It kind of blows my mind how they can see a bird and just know where its head is. Like I wonder if you went to like an alien planet if you could point this camera at something and it would know where where its eye was. Cause that would be interesting. We just need to find aliens first. And not only is it scary good at finding something's eye, it is ridiculously good at tracking it. Like almost every photo and video that comes out of this where I'm tracking someone's eye is razor sharp in every single photo. Something that I have noticed though, is uh, when I'm trying to track like details on cars um, or anything that's not like a person or something big, uh, sometimes it struggles where it'll initially grab focus like instantly, like it it knows to grab it wherever I like point the little thingy on the on the screen. But then it'll sometimes it'll sometimes lose it while I'm like halfway through a pan, and it'll just trail off and go somewhere else. And I gotta reset up the shot. Is it that time? Is it time to talk about the most controversial part of this camera that plagued this camera for? Well, it still is, but it plagued this camera for the first like three months of its launch. Um, yeah, I think it's time to talk about it. Overheating. Oh boy. The way that people described this camera and the R5 was basically like it was a, just a bomb. That you bought a bomb that was going to self-destruct at any given moment. And let me tell you, I haven't experienced a single part of that. Not a single time. I have, I live in South Florida. It's, it's really hot here. It gets gross. And I have never seen even an overheating warning pop up. And I shoot all day long. I was so, I almost didn't buy this camera because of the overheating that I heard of. But I can safely say, especially if you're thinking about buying this camera, uh, I have never, even had an overheat warning pop up. Uh, it may be different for you. If you're shooting anything 4K, especially 4K 60 for like long periods of time, like if you do an entire uh, interview in 4K 60, it, it'll probably overheat. But I, it, honestly, for everything that I do, even shooting all day, like shooting uh, real estate and events, and then mostly what I do is like compilation videos and that kind of stuff and YouTube stuff here. Uh, I've never even had an overheating warning pop up. And I've been I've been kind of waiting for it. I want I I kind of want that little rectangle to pop up because I I saw it on so many videos and I was like, oh, I'm gonna be seeing a lot of that. Never happened. It has never happened once to me. I have never seen the overheating warning. It has never said that it's gotten too hot. So there you go. Uh, it's not a problem. So don't worry about it. This camera is amazing. It is not without faults. This camera has plenty of flaws, but I liked this camera so much that I bought two of them. Yup, this video is being filmed on another R6. And uh, this is the one that I just picked up uh, a few weeks ago. And I gotta say, having two cameras, especially two of the same cameras that are capable of exactly the same things is so helpful. So yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. If you enjoyed it, 
please hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. Uh, and drop some comments down below. I read them all. Let me know uh, what you want to see on future videos and I'll try and make it happen. Uh, or if you just have any comments or uh, anything about the R6 or anything that we talked about, um, let me know. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>